Yeah, so my name is Ray Barbie, and um, we're here in Long Beach. I grew up in San Jose, and that's where uh, I got into skateboarding. It was the summer of sixth grade going into seventh, so when we got into seventh grade and got to school, um, we started hanging out with these other guys that skated, and it turned out a lot of them played in bands and things. So through skateboarding and videos and things, um, there's this one band in particular, Firehose, that really caught my ear. When I think about that band and, and a lot of, and even the band before that, Minutemen, which Minutemen was George Hurley, D. Boone, and Mike Watt. Firehose was uh, George Hurley, Mike Watt, and Ed Crawford. Those guys are very much doing their own thing, which really appealed to me because I felt in skateboarding and getting into street skating, we were trying to do our own thing. So we're on our way into San Pedro, uh, where Mike Watt's from, and where there's a lot of neat, uh, kind of do-it-yourself uh, people. <laughs> there was something Mike always said that always encouraged me. You know, after the shows, he would always say, do your own thing and write your own stories. So when, when I talked with Fuel about doing the show, I was like, man, I've got to do it with Mike Watt. And then when me and Mike Watt talked about what we wanted to do for the show and, and really have it be something that shows people that you can do it yourself and check out all these examples of people doing it themselves. Um, it made perfect sense to get my buddy Chuck Treese in. You know. Have you guys ever played together before? Me and Chuck, um, we've gone to Japan and played shows, uh, random shows like in New York and Philly. And, and then me and Mike, uh, Mike's recorded a song with me for a firm video, so I um, played with Mike that one time. So This will be a first time putting a set together. Mike Watt from San Pedro, California. You know, this is where I practice. This was the first place Firehose practice. Uh, Minuteman ended because people were getting killed, and this kid found my phone number, came all the way from Ohio, and we made this band called Firehose. And uh, this is where those practs were. Somehow I want to get back to there, but I got to remember that rhythm. That was kind of only like. Yeah, no, 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 we'll jam that out for a while. Okay. And then we'll just look and at each other. Give me the high. Oh, yeah, 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 exactly. Here it comes. And I'll give it to Chuck, and you look for that. <laughs> we'll go you look for that. Fill. Cool. Yeah, that's a trip. That's because music is its own vocabulary. You can just get in a room with a cat. And if you're open minded enough and don't have uh, preconceptions, you can find a lot of common ground. I mean, a lot of ways this scene, it celebrates individuality, you know? But then there's lots of common ground because we're all humans. So it's this weird kind of balance between the two. And so when you get in with some cat and jam with them or collaborate, that's what happens. And that's what we're doing here. This is the first time I ever played with Chuck, and he's a bad drummer. pretty crazy like just all of a sudden you know I played with Ray before but just being a fan of you know Mike's and everything it just feels good to just be accepted by someone like Mike who's been there a long time and Ray you know because I, I mean music is my heart it's, it's my life and it's what I do to feed my kids and everything but I still like to feel like I'm learning for the first time you know what I mean that's that's where I'm at here in Pedro we're gonna skate the Pedro side I'm not sure if that's what they call it. <laughs> but there's a skate park underneath the bridge here that, uh, that they built on their own. A lot of neat stuff going on here in San Pedro. There'd been talk for years about getting a skate park built in San Pedro, and nothing ever happened. And when they finally said there was something was going to happen, there was going to be a plastic uh, modular piece of crap. and. Uh, we had always seen this place, and it was kind of like had the elements of Washington Street or Burnside, you know, under a freeway. We thought, fish, we can do the same thing here, maybe, try it out. We didn't think it was going to last, but five years later, there you have it. 
I didn't want to drive anymore. I didn't want to drive to go to some skate park. There's no other way to explain it. Very poorly designed, boring, really sterile environment. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's not really fun. Took the fun right out of it for me. So you, have, you put a little bit into it, you know, and uh, that guy puts a little bit into it, and she does something, and he does something, and everybody, whether they're trying to or not, it all kind of ends up going to, to some pretty cool looking thing, you know? Coming up, we'll show you what happens when Ray, Mike, and Chuck get in a room together to jam. I don't know if people realize it, but there's a whole circuit now of cats touring where they don't even use clubs. They play in people's houses. And uh, that's what the street, there's these uh, young ladies who live there and they put on gigs. So this is a thing all under themselves. These are the same exact ethics that we were doing in the 70s. You know, you make your own scene. There's no, uh, I don't know what you want to call it, corporate gatekeeper guy on top. It's them running it. They bring their shirts and, and whatever, their records. They play for these kids and uh, move on to the next town. And so uh, we were, I was talking to Ray Barbie about this. He said, when I think of Pedro, I always think of DIY, you know, because of the Minuteman. And, and then the skate park. And then this 13th Street pad. And it all kind of fits together like a weird quilt. You know, because they're based around the same kind of ethics. You know, let your freak flag fly. <laughs> I like that. It's not hard. I mean, if if you really want to do something like this, you just basically embrace everyone with, you know, your arms open and you let them into your house. We we have trust, you know, for the people that we let in to our house. We let them stay here. I mean, it's not a big place, but if they can fit here. <laughs> It doesn't take much, all we have to do is just move the furniture, get all the equipment in, and let all the people in. You know, I'd be lying if I said that we're just gonna go in there and whatever happens, happens. There's a big element of that, but kind of go in with some ideas. What kind of shape or form they take, I don't know, but I know that there are definitely some things that I want to bring to the table so that we can be productive in that small amount of time.
Don't go away. We're coming back to San Pedro for the rest of the performance. The natural essence of getting in a room with some people and playing is the same thing as just getting into like a, you know, going to skate a pool or, or grinding a curb and someone just keeps, you know, the energy just keeps building. So it's like, it's, it's like freedom of speech, but when you don't have to talk, it's amazing.
guess it just boils down and, and, and you hear it all the time, just creativity. Just being able to create something, you know, and, and to be able to do that without relying on other people. You know? But I love that you can say, you know what, I know the way I want it done, I can do it. You know, and I think that's a big kind of draw for me in uh, the advantages of doing it yourself.